Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and this evening we're going to have a look at the latest GFS, GM, ESMWF, ESMWF ensembles, GFS ensembles and the UK Met Office run for the five day forecast. Now yesterday we're having a look at the possibility of some thunderstorms potentially and some hotter weather for a few days as the jet stream gets really amplified as it starts to power up um, sort of by next weekend. Now today's runs it's very similar um, with the jet stream really powering up, slightly different outcome with more low pressure involved um, within the latest model output um, but it just shows you there is a lot of uncertainty out there and it does look like this big block we have at the moment is going to be breaking down and unsettled conditions are going to be taking over whether that, it, that is in the form of thunderstorms and potentially a little bit of a hot plume or the, whether it's just generally westerly or southwesterly winds whether we even see some northerly winds potentially um, is it all really up in the air um, depending on how these tropical systems that are developing out in the Atlantic including ex-hurricane Ida um, does impact the jet stream so if we do run through the latest GFS you can see the block is around over the next few days um, and we do have some quite drab conditions really especially in the east it's got a lot of cloud coming in that's trapped under the high pressure as again we haven't really had a lot of air movement because we've just been sat under this high pressure what it does mean in areas that have seen cloud develop it really hasn't gotten gone anywhere there's nothing really to push it away so it does look like some areas in the east may be hanging onto the cloud over the next few days. Should be some sunny spells at times, especially further west as well. Um, but does it like that high pressure by this weekend will be breaking down and we're going to see um, rain and low pressure move in. Now initially it would just be a general area of low pressure in off the Atlantic. And if we do have a look at the upper air temperatures, it's going to sweep some cooler air in. However, you can see the system out in the Atlantic, which is the remnants of ex-hurricane Ida, and that's going to be pushing up some warmer air. We're going to get a warmer sector, not quite as hot on this latest GFS in terms of those upper airs staying intact, but it's going to bring in some potentially stormy weather and some rain bands as well. We also do see another um, uh, tropical system out the, in the Atlantic, and that we've got to keep an eye on what, how, what that does um, to, with regards to the weather. But you can see we do generally go into the westerly pattern, high pressure to the south, low pressure to the north, all the way into the longer term, pulling in westerly winds, and even by the end of the run, we're going into a cooler northwesterly wind. Um, I'll show you the GM and the Eastern VF in a minute, and those have really quite different outcomes in terms of air masses, even though it's generally an unsettled sort of picture. So you can see there, very different to the GFS yesterday we saw, which had southerly winds coming in. This is more of a north or northwesterly outcome, um, potentially bringing some cooler conditions in. Now, they, of course, there could still be some heavy rain, some strong winds, and even some thunderstorms around this sort of scenario, as it's going to have a lot of energy and instability coming in off the Atlantic. And at times, when we do get caught up with some hot and humid air from X, uh, tropical storms and hurricanes, it can give the energy for some thunderstorms. So doesn't mean thunderstorms, as we saw yet in the essay video, can't guarantee not to happen, just on this latest GFS, looking more unlikely with a different sort of air mass coming in. But as we look at the other runs, you can see really anything can be happening sort of this time next week in terms of um, what sort of low pressure we're going to see. You see at the moment we've got the block around on the latest GEM. Eventually, it will break down as we head towards this week, uh, this coming weekend. And you see low pressure initially, just an Atlantic low, dropping to the south. And that could draw up potentially a bit of warmer air in off the continent for a time. Potentially a few thunderstorms of that. And then we do see the uh, remnants of ex-hurricane Ida spreading to the north of the country. Potentially bringing in a little bit of stormy weather towards the middle of the week with some warmer, humid air for a time moving through. Before once again go into westerly winds, you can see some quite hot air in the middle of the Atlantic. And what this is going to do, combined with some cool air over Greenland, it could spin up some of these low pressure systems. It's quite stormy systems, and you can see by day 10, it really is a model picture high pressure to the south and the west, high pressure up towards Scandinavia, and there's just this slither of low pressure, and again, low pressure up towards Greenland as well, and then another tropical system. It just shows you the amount of uncertainty. Um, and volatility within the jet stream whenever we get these tropical systems um, pushed in but you can see once again on the GM a lot more unsettled with this block breaking down and again we can see heavy rain strong winds at times some cooler conditions or even some hot conditions where we do see some of these warmer sectors come in and again once again with small localized low pressure systems running into this hotter air we could see at times could see some thunderstorms of course around with that
If we do have a look at the ECMWF, you can see generally high pressure is over the top of the country at the moment. And that will continue throughout this week. And then as we head to week, towards weekend, you can see this low pressure sliding in quite a vigorous low potentially in the far southwest. It does fill in. But if you do have a look at the upper air temperatures by early next week, you can see there is a bit of warmer air ahead of it. Could be some heavy rain, some showers, and maybe some thunderstorms with that. And then we see the energy from ex-Hurricane Ida moving in over the Atlantic. And you can see warm air is trying to push in from the west. And again, could be very unsettled with strong winds, heavy rain, um, and a few thunderstorms potentially around as well with this very unsettled outlook. So you can see it's all up in the air at the moment with regards to exactly what's going to happen. We're really going to have to wait until the short time range, i.e. three, four, five days out from these uh, systems coming in, as there's a lot of uncertainty in the track of Ida uh, and how it will interact with the jet stream, and then generally um, how, how the block will break down. We've got a lot of moving parts here, but it does look like the block will be breaking down in some sort of fashion, and it does look like it's going to be going unsettled. Whether that unsettled is going to be warm with thunderstorms, or whether it's going to be um, washout conditions from the west with lots of heavy rain and strong winds, it's too difficult to say at the moment. You can see with these models, that a lot of them are sort of in between um, with patterns of stormy weather, and then there are other areas with warmer air coming in. Um, with potentially some thunderstorms so we'll just have to keep an eye on really what happens it's no um it's not guaranteed to happen uh this the way we're seeing on the models at the moment but it is looking like the block is going to be breaking down with some unsettled conditions if we do have a look at the eastern wf ensembles which will show this really quite well this change from blocking pattern you can see at the moment the amount of red we have on the screen with the big blocking pattern but as we head towards next monday you can see there is a lot of uncertainty you can see six different scenarios here we got 15 or 29.4 percent with high pressure breaking away low pressure coming in with sort of west or southwesterly winds You've got 10 still with the block over the top of the country trying to push low pressure in this scenario where it's a much slower breakdown could draw up some hotter air from the south and southeast thunderstorms and, and maybe the hot day here or there could come with that another 10 of course a very similar scenario with the control operational run where a very slow breakdown of the block and again could be some slow moving showers and thunderstorms another nine of low pressure pushing through but with some northern blocking up towards uh, scandinavia halting those low pressure you can see another four low pressure to our south um, as a cutoff low and that would be a very thundery and again quite warm scenario with winds coming up from the south and you can see another three just with west or northwesterly winds so you can't see the amount of uncertainty there is at this stage if we do move on another couple of days and uh, to uh, the 10th of september you can see 13 of high pressure towards scandinavia high pressure out in the middle of the atlantic and then more low pressure towards green and so sort of a west or northwesterly wind so a little bit cooler there but again could be seeing some contradictory winds coming in from the east a bit of a battleground situation there another 13 with low pressure to our north driving in northwesterly winds that would be pretty chilly another 12 low pressure just over the top of the uk more northern blocking around and that could be pulling in some cooler air in from the north another eight have got low pressure over the top of the country big blocking out in the atlantic and more northerly or northwesterly winds and another five of high pressure over the top of the uk but not particularly uh the center is not particularly close to the uk so it will still be uh cloudy and have some rain around at times so we have northwesterly winds if you go right towards the end of the run all the way to 14th of september you can see a very very muddled picture 13 of high pressure towards Scandinavia, a bit of an easterly wind there, but with low pressure trying to break in off the Atlantic. You've got 13 with low pressure sat over the top of the UK with very unsettled conditions, with a bit of blocking to the north, potentially pulling in some cooler air. Another 12 of low pressure to our south and southwest, potentially drawing up some warmer air from the southwest. We'll have to look at that in more detail if that scenario does come off, and uh, it's got control run in it, um, as that would be, uh, depending on exact wind directions, will either be warm and thundery or could be very unsettled, raining and cool and cold. Another eight have low pressure to the south UK. That could be drawing up some warmer air from the south, but also could be having some westerly winds and that. And again, it depends on the orientation of these low pressure systems. But again, unsettled. Another nine has a typical positive NAO pattern with a lot of low pressure to the north and high pressure to the south, drawing in a flat westerly wind, um, which would be uh, yeah very, very unsettled. And again, we'll have to keep an eye on how this 
uh, how this all develops. You can see the amount of uncertainty there is at this stage, and how it is looking like it's going to be turning unsettled. Still with some high pressure around in some sort of way. It's not going to be an absolute washout, but it is going to be a lot more low pressure dominated. Uh, and and we have to see where the exact air mass and air direction, uh, wind direction does come from to see um, what sort of temperatures we're going to be looking at. And whether it's going to be sort of a thundery low or a more um, just generally cool and unsettled low. If we do have a look at the GFS ensembles for London, you can see the uncertainty put here. You can see for sort of 5th, 6th of September, it's pretty much guaranteed now. Things are going to be turning more unsettled with a lot more rain around and shower activity. No massive frequent spikes. So it's not like it's going to be actually wash out, but it's going to be unsettled. You can see over the temperatures over the next four or five days are going to be around, uh, going to be above average. And it's going to be when we do see sunshine, things could turn a little bit warmer and potentially getting to the low 20s. But when we see cloud that we've seen today in many parts, it's going to feel a little bit cooler um, in the east. East. Beyond that, as we head towards the 5th, 6th of September, the uncertainty really comes in. You can see there are some warmer ensemble runs, getting up to 15 degrees at 850 HPA, which would give temperatures around mid-20s, maybe even a tad higher, um, and that would be uh, that would be accompanied probably by some thundery activity as well. Others around average, including the operational run, which is a bit more mixed, doesn't quite know where it's going to go at this stage, with a lot of low pressure around, but not really completely breaking through the block, uh, a really sort of weird pattern setting up. Um, and then you've got others going cooler, which will have west or northwesterly winds breaking in, um, with some cooler conditions coming back from Greenland. And again, you can see that continuing, a lot of uncertainty from around the 5th of September, and we're just going to have to keep an eye on how it does develop. If we have a look at the mean sea level pressure, you can see um, that generally things are above average before it drops down around the 5th, 6th of September, where we see low pressure come tumbling back in. Its exact capacity of low pressure is uncertain. You've got some going for higher um, pressure, around 1,015, 1,010 millibars, which is lower pressure than we have now, but it's not drastically low pressure, it's not going to be an absolute washout. Others are going to around 1,000 millibars, which is much lower pressure uh, and is more likely to have showers and cloud and heavier rain with it. And then you can see there's just a really up and down sort of roller coaster pattern where we've got some going quite high pressure again, others staying low, and some towards the end of the run going pretty pretty low down to 990 millibars, which is sort of an, uh, sort of a, an autumnal low moving in there. So... We'll just have to keep an eye on it. Again, as I said, it's very uncertain at this stage, and I can't really pinpoint exactly what's going to be happening. This is a, a, a scenario where we just got to keep eyes um, peeled on the models. Uh, and over the next few days, I suspect they will start to model it. But again, as we have different factors uh, coming into the weather, including those tropical systems, a, a big blocking area of high pressure, which are generally hard to model in sort of easier times, and we don't have tropical systems putting a spanner into the jet stream, you can just see why there is this uncertainty at this stage. If we do have a look at the UK Met Office run for the next five days, which is a little bit more straightforward, you can see a few patchy showers heading from the east over the next few days. Generally, though, things are pretty dry, if not a little bit cloudy at times for some areas. Again, showers moving in the east should be very light and drizzly. Maybe a few heavier showers here or there, but nothing too substantial. And this is what we've been really been seeing over the last five days. Last few sort of four or five days where we've seen this really dry really dry conditions. If we have a look at the max temperatures, you can see this afternoon uh, it's been around sort of mid to high teens, maybe 18, 19 degrees where we've seen more, uh, more sunshine, but it's been quite a drab day with a lot of cloud around. As we head to Tuesday afternoon, you see temperatures maybe a little bit up, maybe in 18, 19, 20 degrees in areas where we've seen a little bit more sunshine around. And as we head towards uh, Wednesday, we can see that temperatures are going to um, rise again in the west, maybe 15, 16, 17, 18 degrees quite widely, but again a bit cooler further east, around 14, 15 degrees, feeling a little bit more drab, but we have that thicker cloud. And once again, Thursday, temperatures maybe a little bit up. 18, 19, 20 degrees, feeling pleasant in the sunshine, a little cooler in the cloud, of course. And as we head all the way to um Sort of to Thursday afternoon, you can see temperatures once again into the low 20s in the south, a little bit cooler further north. So again, it's not looking amazing, but really as we're heading into September, 20 degrees is going to be fairly decent. I think a lot of people will say, although you could argue August hasn't really lived up to what we hoped um, of some maybe some hotter weather here or there. It's been pretty drab um, and pretty cloudy. Generally, I would very much prefer this sort of cloudy around 20 or high teens than having sort of 15 degrees 
washout condition with heavy rain. I'd much rather these conditions. I know they're not optimal and some people would love to see more sunshine and love to have some higher temperatures. But I must say these really are not that bad um, for late August, early September. It can be a lot worse. So do make sure you go out and enjoy the dry weather. As I can guarantee you, this time next week, there will be some rain around, at least for some, if not many areas, will be seeing some rain. Um, and it could be uh, could be a lot of rain falling in some areas next week, and we'll have to keep an eye on that. So anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.